Hey, everybody, how's it going? So, I got an email there last week from the guys at Waves. They're like, hey, Glenn, we got this new studio rack system uh, you should really check out. And I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to use this for? Because isn't the studio rack for live? And they're like, hey, no, seriously, check it out. There's some really cool features. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So, I'm working on a mix for something else, a mic demo coming up. And I thought uh, I'd try out the studio rack system. And, yeah, it's kind of neat. There, there's some cool features, and it lets me do things in a certain way that I've always wondered how the hell I would pull it off. Um, this is the mix I'm working on right now. And I'm just trying out the new Austrian Audio OC818 mic on the guitars with that. And there's going to be more on that in the future. Um, it's got programmable multi-patterns that you can do after you've recorded, which is really freaking cool. So what's going on here and what makes the Studio Rack different is it kind of groups everything into one plugin. And you've got your chains and you can do some cool stuff like multi-band splits. And I'm going to show you guys what that's all about. And... What, what really works for me here is that you can just grab one instance and drag and drop, and it'll throw it on other tracks. So if you're doing a large project and you want to get your settings across multiple songs really quickly, this is a very efficient way of doing it. It's also great for templates, that kind of thing. And you can load these up any way you'd want. Like I've got one over here for my mastering chain, and what I got here? I got the J37 tape, SSL comp, ultra maximizer and a, and a meter as well. I'm noticing when I click on these, it, it closes one window out and then brings up the other one. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's possible to keep these all open at the same time. I don't know if that's a switch or something like that. It's something I haven't found yet. I always started messing around with this last night and well, it's definitely cooler than I thought it was gonna be. Now, I've got the CLA mix hub going on here, but I'm not using the bucket system. I'm just using the channel processing. Lasse Lammert said in one of the forums the other day that he was really enjoying the sound of this plug and I gotta say, yeah, it really sounds great. So, we got this going on the snare here. Mute out that reverb. So there's our raw sound, and yeah, you can hear just the gating going on. It's pretty damn impressive. You know, we can boost that up a bit, bring the mids back in. There's a lot of bottom mic going on here as well. I let, I'm starting to get into that whole rattly kind of sound, which is cool. But here's where it's interesting. Throw the limiter on, just for a bit of volume, kind of keep the peaks under control. Now that's starting to sound a little bit more like a normal snare. So here's what's going on here. So this is the real strength of the system is that you can do multi-band splits and treat different parts of your signal differently. Somebody mentioned on the comments there a few weeks ago that Nolly treats his acoustic drums with a bit of distortion in the top end. I thought, hey, this would be a, a perfect way to do that. So what I got going on here is the Manny M distortion. And I'm just throwing this on top of the snare here. We just bring a bit of distortion in. Adds a little bit of zing to the top end. A little goes a long way for a bit of verb on. And again, I thought I think I brought a little too much bottom on that snare. Now that's sitting in the mix. On the on its own, it was sounded a little weird, but in the mix, damn, that really worked. Whoop. Let's make sure we got one channel selected there. And the great thing is, you know, for drum processing, that kind of thing, it's just been a case of studio rack after studio rack using the CLA and the limiter and the multiband split with a little bit of distortion, even on the toms. And that, that really helps the toms jump out. I'm really digging it for this purpose. That's not bad at all. Now, if we throw a bit more verb on those toms, I don't know if that's going to give things a bit more meat. 
And let's just bring all that up and let's see what we got. And I've also got the exact same thing going on with the kick drum with the distortion as well. So I've got, oh, I've got the SSLG channel on the kick. And we got the multi-band split going on as well. A little bit of Manny M distortion going on. The extreme top. And let's check that out in the mix. Well, just how much of a difference that distortion makes in the top end. That's pretty cool right there. That's uh, that's really effective, I gotta say. I'm kinda digging that trick. I'm probably gonna use that on more mixes in the future. The other place I've got something going on with it is the lead guitar here. Now, John Suki uh, laid down something really amazing here. Now, I've got a lot of effects going on here. i got an REQ. i got a bit of the Puig Tech, uh, Pultec style EQ, just to give it a bit more of a top-end boost, L1 limiter, and a Doubler stomp. And i got to say, I started playing around the, uh, the Waves guitar stomp boxes last night. And even those are really cool. My big gripe here with the whole interface thing is this is a 4K screen, and those effects come up as tiny. Uh, they need to have user-resizable interfaces. So, hey, friends at Waves, um, Let's get into the 2020s here, please, and make those interfaces reconfigurable because uh, old guys like me working on 4K screens really need it because these are bifocals and I just can't see that small anymore. Now, the other thing is, besides being able to do multiband, we can do parallel splits where we can split the signal into three different paths and I can apply effects individually to each of those paths and then blend according to taste. So if we take a listen here. Let's uh, let's slow the guitar up first. So there's our delay. Nope. So there's our delay. And there's a little plate reverb and a flanger as well. And these faders here let us adjust all those. See, I've always wondered about doing that, you know, like a chorus or a flanger with a reverb, and I don't want the flange guitar sound to run into the reverb sound. I want to keep those individually. So you can do it this way as a parallel split instead of having to you know, load up a bunch of different tracks and s use your sends and whatnot and just clut up your mixer board. This kind of makes everything compact and much easier to work with. Now this is also designed for live work as you can set up macros and just put your most important controls available here like a limiter a threshold that kind of thing that's absolutely fine oh midi learn even great uh, i'm just gonna edit macro cool but for studio recording i'm just more than happy to use this kind of system here anyway that's the wave studio rack is available today follow the link in the description below check it out take care